What I have in mind uh, is to briefly survey the progress that uh, has been made since the mid-90s, uh, which was when I first began working in Kukichin uh, languages uh, in our understanding of Kukichin or South Central Tibeto-Burman uh, for the domains of alignment typology uh, and then insofar as alignment typology doesn't uh, impinge on the verbal complex, some other aspects of the verbal complex, so valence affecting phenomena, uh, directionals, uh, and what I've called verbal classifiers. Uh, and uh, if I have uh, enough time, I think I will, I'll also mention elaborate expressions, uh, which is something we may uh, already be too late for, uh, unfortunately. Um, so uh, Kugichen or South Central includes the languages in one, uh, and I won't belabor that uh, since uh, I think probably everybody here is familiar with uh, the subgrouping uh, that's given there. Um, so I just include the languages so you can get some idea of the, the um, different parts of the, the group that I'm talking about. Um, so moving straight to alignment typology. Um, by the mid 90s, uh, there was, I believe, a widespread understanding of South Central languages as uh, being ergative, uh, at least with, with regards to case marking. Um, and at that point, a uh, few verbal participant marking systems had been fully analyzed. Uh, so there's less certainty about how those systems tend to pattern. Um, so uh, two uh, illustrates, uh, the example two at the bottom of page one illustrates uh, core case marking in MISO. Uh, so 2A shows an intransitive subject goat, kale, uh, without any case marking. Um, and if you compare at the top of page two in the handout 2B, uh, you'll see that uh, a goat uh, in that sentence, or the goat in that sentence is uh, marked by the suffix in, uh, so it's a transitive subject there. Um, uh, the transitive object in 2B, grass, uh, like the intransitive participant in 2A, uh, is uh, unmarked for case. Um, so an ergative absolutive pattern, essentially. Uh, and um, three and four show similar um, uh, facts for lie and tedim to other languages that we knew quite a bit about by that uh, time. Uh, and so that was our, our impression of what Kukichen languages were like in terms of case marking. Uh, in terms of verbal participant marking, uh, we uh, had been exposed to systems like uh, the one in Lai, uh, illustrated in five, where um, uh, the verbal participant marking uh, is not ergative absolutive uh, in terms of its alignment. So uh, it uh, lie shows essentially nominative accusative marking in second and third persons, but uh, uh, neutral marking in first person. So if you compare uh, the first singular forms for uh, intransitive and transitive subjects, um, so S and A uh, versus uh, P, the object <coughs> of intransitive clauses, um, you uh, have n no distinction between the first person singular markers, uh, at least in terms of form. Um, they're placed slightly differently in, in the order of elements, um, which distinguishes them, but uh, formally they're the same. Uh, first person, the same thing, but you'll see there's a difference between A and S in the case of uh, the um, uh, second and third person markers and P. Um, so uh, essentially nominative accusative type alignment there. Um, the MISO uh, down at the very bottom, which we don't need to look at in detail, it's a little bit small in the handout, uh, had a different system, but uh, still not too far from straightforward nominative accusative in certain respects. Um, certainly no hint of ergativity or anything uh, more um, unexpected. Uh, so um, Bedell, who uh, amassed a body of treatments of several systems uh, over the last couple of decades, reached uh, it, well, uh, beginning in the 90s, reached, uh, I think, his high point with Ko, which uh, I extracted the forms uh, from an article of his uh, in number seven at one point. Uh, and if uh, we won't examine them carefully, but if you look through them, you'll see that there's no uh, indication that there is ergativity, er ergativity uh, in the marking there. It's uh, essentially nominative accusative, although there are some... Uh, some um, some syncretisms and uh, other uh, complications to the paradigm, um, but nothing uh, uh, out of the ordinary. Um, but in Delancey's discussion of Mara in the paper that touched off years of uh, controversy in Tibeto-Burman linguistics regarding uh, the reconstructability of pronominal marking um, uh, still ongoing, 
Uh, he hinted at hierarchical marking uh, in Mara, which uh, nevertheless was at that point undergoing a restructuring, uh, so not completely uh, uh, recognizable as a uh, hierarchical marking, in particular an inverse marking uh, system. Um, but that was a hint of things to come. So uh, in uh, the present, um, we, uh, 25 years later, um, uh, uh, certainly have uh, seen a large number of other um, uh, ergative absolutive case marking systems described. Um, so uh, Dai, Hyo, uh, um, Helga Hartman's uh, account of Lemmy treats it as being essentially ergative. Um, uh, maybe there are some which have uh, less clearly ergative absolutive systems. Uh, so. Uh, a lot of the older sources for these languages um, don't indicate uh, strict ergative absolutive case marking, but uh, rather, and, and actually, Hyo, uh, I should mention, uh, doesn't have strict ergative absolutive. It's um, like like you see in Mizo and Lai, it's um, got split ergative marking with third person uh, marked um, and second and first person unmarked uh, in terms of uh, overt nominal elements. Um, uh, so uh, other systems, maybe uh, there's something that we could describe it as a genitive marker, but maybe it's not, uh, strictly speaking, an ergative marker. Um, so um, maybe Shobana can comment about whether Lamkang is like that or not, um, and I'm not sure about Monsang. Uh, but um, uh, it would make sense that a lot of languages uh, of Manipur might end up with more agent marking rather than ergative marking due to contact with Meite. So, um, so that that's one side of uh, things where uh, things have gotten a little bit uh, less straightforward. Um, uh, at the same time, we've also uh, got a number of examples of uh, languages which uh, have nominative accusative, essentially uh, case marking um, uh, boringly. Uh, in, uh, for instance, uh, Kumi, uh, the uh, elements that are underlined there uh, are, uh, those are uh, tonally marked uh, as locative. Uh, so the locative marker is extended to P participants uh, in Kumi if they're sufficiently salient, um, as they are in uh, sentence eight. In, Nine, uh, Rangmicha, uh, like Kumi, also has uh, extension of locative marking to um, uh, P participants if they're uh, sufficiently uh, salient. And um, uh, there's a segmental marking there. So this N element you see in nine, uh, in nine it actually marks uh, not only the uh, Matnit element, which is the, the P participant, um, the people who were floated off uh, on the raft, uh, it uh, also that example also shows you just a, a straightforward uh, instance of the um, uh, no marker uh, as a locative marker. Um, the no at the end of the sentence, you'd be tempted to call that a uh, a locative marker as well. But no actually is in this case a borrowing from ru. Uh, uh, Ringmicha uh, marks sequentiality with other means, not the no uh, element. So. Um, in terms of uh, participant marking, uh, at the top of page four, a number of systems have uh, been recovered, um, which uh, at least in part involve hierarchical, specifically inverse marking. Uh, so uh, in 10 from uh, uh, Conrad Wanglar's uh, treatment uh, in the excellent volume uh, from Himalayan linguistics on uh, Northeast Indian uh, uh, person indexation systems, uh, you uh, see that there is uh, an M prefix, uh, which uh, occurs in the lower left-hand quadrant of the uh, paradigm, uh, where you have second persons and third persons acting on first persons, and uh, uh, third persons acting on second persons and first persons. Um, so. Uh, just uh, in the appropriate conditions uh, to act as an inverse marker, um, reversing uh, the default in, uh, interpretation of person markers mapped to roles uh, according to the hierarchy um, one over two over three, which uh, is apparently operative in the language. Um, in Hyo, uh, uh, Zakaria has uh, shown uh, that uh, you have a knee inverse marker 
um, which uh, makes in uh, number 11 a, a number of appearances um, because in this language, uh, first person is not ranked over second person, but first person and second person are uh, ranked equally in the hierarchy. So whenever uh, you get the, the you get the knee marker whenever second person is acting on first person, but you also get it when first person is acting on second person. And uh, more confusingly, knee also, uh, if I'm not mistaken, indicates plural uh, in certain forms in this paradigm. So another knee, which is homophonous with the inverse marker, also pops up uh, in a number of places. Um, uh, more straightforwardly in Lam Kang, at least for the uh, portion of the paradigm that's seen in number 12, uh, T marks uh, inverse uh, in under conditions which are comparable to those which were seen from Lonsang. So again, uh, it's in the uh, lower left-hand quadrant. Uh, so this T prefix um, uh, marking an inverse uh, situation. So uh, two uh, related issues uh, where considerable progress has been made in the uh, last quarter decade include recognition of the prevalence of postverbal participant marking paradigm remnants, uh, if not uh, uh, you know pretty full paradigms. Um, so particularly in the Northwestern languages or the formerly known uh, as Old Kuki languages. Uh, and also in uh, southeastern languages like Hyo, um, uh, not illustrated in number 11, but uh, Hyo has in the negative a pretty uh, robust uh, representation of the uh, what must be reconstructable postverbal participant marking, as Delancey has uh, discussed. Uh, and uh, the, there's also the prevalence of systems where the verbal complex is more fragmented in general with uh, interspersed auxiliary or auxiliary-like elements rather than uh, forming a coherent uh, agglutinative piece. Um, so, I mean, it may still form an agglutinative piece, but there are um, portions of it which are analyzable as in containing auxiliary elements. Um, so that uh, is indeed progress, I think, um, uh, in terms of our understanding of the alignment of these languages. Uh, turning to three, um, some other aspects of the verbal complex um, uh, um, from the discussions that were available for Lizo and Bom and Mizo, Tedim, Cezanne, uh, by the mid 90s, um, there were um, at least fragmentary discussions in older sources uh, um, that were um, indicative of what might be there. Uh, by the mid 90s, we realized there were morphological causatives and possibly benefactives for some of these languages. Um, there uh, maybe is evidence in the discussion of Baum by Reichliff or a, uh, and possibly also for Lizo of uh, other types of uh, applicative-like constructions. Um, but uh, what we know after 25 years is that there is a widespread suffixal causative SAC um, uh, recognized long ago, but uh, only for specific portions of the family. Um, but it seems to be pretty uh, uh, widespread. Uh, so it's found in dai, uh, in shak, it's found in uh, the productive causative shak in hyo. Um, it's marginally attested in ring micha and um, less grammaticalized than I would expect it to be in ring micha given its uh, presence elsewhere in the family. Um, even in lai, it uh, makes an appearance in a few uh, lexicalized verbs. Um, uh, in lizo, it actually turns up as a, a benefactive marker rather than a, a causative, but that also makes sense. Um, um, probably older is a uh, P or M prefix causative, uh, also widely attested, um, found in Dai, Kumi, Rangmicha, Sorbonne, Lamkang. Um, I, I forgot to check, but I think it's also found in Pankwa. Um, uh, so uh, 13 uh, gives an example uh, from Rangmicha of this uh, prefix. Um, and uh, so the it gives the prefixed uh, causative blot, uh, and then it also gives uh, an instance of that verb without the prefix uh, in an intransitive uh, sense. Um, so that's that one. Uh, at the top of page six, uh, there's also, of course, initial voiceless stop aspiration and sonorant devoicing uh, that's widely attributed to an S causative prefix seen elsewhere in Tibetan Burman. Um, this also has a fairly broad dis distribution, um, so in central Chin uh, and also in southeastern in Hyo. Uh, it's very uh, robust in Hyo, uh, as shown by Zakaria. 
Uh, and uh, finally, there are various more sporadic developments, um, like uh, the uh, causative der in Lai, um, which I think is also tir in Mizo. Um, and then there's a southwestern element, Hai, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, so uh, regarding applicatives, in uh, 1998, I wrote about the uh, remarkable family of applicatives that's seen in Hakka Lai, um, of which I'll draw special attention to the benefactive, uh, malefactive applicative in uh, 14a, uh, which, like um, as far as I know, almost all uh, benefactive, malefactive applicatives comes from uh, the verb to give. Um, uh, the committative in 14c, uh, marked by b, uh, the relinquative in 14f, doc, uh, and the instrumental in 14g, uh, marked by NAC. Um, and I draw attention to these because these are, I think, the most widely attested. Uh, they have the, uh, uh, the widest distribution in South Central. Uh, so for instance, uh, in 15, at the top of page uh, uh, 7, um, all of these show up in DAI. Um, so there's a, a benefactive, malefactive marker uh, um, based on the verb to give. Um, uh, there is a relinquative element uh, identical to lies. Um, the committative um, has uh, bui, which uh, must be the predecessor to lies b. Um, it's a, a regular uh, development of the ui rhyme in lie. Um, and an instrumental um, marked by nak. Um, hyo exhibits most of these as well, uh, seen in 16. Um, uh, so uh, three of the four at least. Um, and uh, Ringmicha and Kumi, on the other hand, uh, show a somewhat more impoverished system uh, with only a uh, be, uh, uh, benefactive, malefactive applicative attested in uh, Ringmicha, um, as uh, shown in 17. Um, I neglected, I'm sorry, uh, to include an example of the Kumi marker, um, but it's marked with Bay, um, virtually identical to Ringmicha's and uh, its behavior. Um, uh, and there is also in these two languages uh, an element high, uh, which um, I can talk about the grammaticalization source for that uh, later if you ask me about it. Um, but uh, it marks uh, instrumentals and committatives in Rangmitsha, uh, as in example 18. Uh, but in uh, Kumi, it has a uh, it's greater functionality. Um, it marks Kumi's productive causative construction. Uh, or it can also mark various types of applicative construction, including instrumental applicatives and uh, goal applicatives, um, exemplified in uh, 19 for the causative and 20 and 21 for the uh, applicative constructions. Um, so uh, another valence affecting construction type, uh, which we knew would be important probably by the late 90s, uh, was the middle, uh, but we're only now becoming uh, more aware of constructions of this sort. Um, and uh, I think we'll hear more about uh, uh, them at least in one language this afternoon. Um, uh, so I'm, maybe we'll hear about them in Yahoo. I'm not sure what we'll hear about uh, in in uh, Tsumtu, whether that, whether it's whether it's a middle there or not. Um, uh, but uh, the middles are important um, for one thing because there is this. Uh, uh, this outlier middle marker um, that occurs in southeastern languages, but also uh, they're interesting because of their potential uh, relation to things uh, which are uh, involved in the inverse systems. Um, so uh, potential relationships of inverse marking and other middle-like uh, phenomena, um, you know, draws the the inverse marking that we uh, see into. Uh, possible light uh, in the context of middles. Um, a further uh, aspect of the verbal complex uh, worth considering is directional elements um, at the top of page 8. Uh, so by the mid-90s, uh, attested descriptions of directional marking involved predominantly prefixal systems. Uh, so uh, the descriptions we've already discussed for central languages like Meso, Bom, and, uh, and Lizo. Um, uh, and the LSI had uh, little tidbits of information from uh, lots of languages, most of it involving prefixal elements. Um, uh, Hartman's uh, 1989 uh, treatment of die directionals was uh, the exception. There were hints that, that there might be um, 
more uh, elements occurring after the verb as well. Um, so uh, skipping over 22 for a second and uh, I'm going to directionals now, um, we have an update on So Hartman 1989 in the form of uh, uh, Helga So Hartman's uh, dissertation uh, from SOAS on Dai, uh, which turned into uh, her grammar of Dai, uh, where she notes important distinctions in directionals depending on um, the motion or lack thereof of the agent involved. Um, so that's a brought in as a parameter uh, besides uh, some of the other parameters, um, which uh, are um, detected uh, widespread. Uh, so in 2014, I surveyed available materials and uh, um, uh, made the observations on directionals in 22 that uh, the prefixal elements listed there are um, uh, widespread, uh, but then there are also some preverbal or prefixal uh, elements uh, found, oh, sorry, there are also some uh, suffixal or postverbal elements found in uh, southeastern and southwestern languages. Um, and I said that maybe there are some exclusively postverbal uh, suffixal languages, but uh, I don't think that's the case because uh, all languages that have suffixal ones uh, have something preverbal. Um, at least, uh, so they uh, both occur. Um, so we, uh, since uh, the 90s, also have uh, papers by Chelly and Ut on uh, Lam Gang, uh, a paper by uh, Van Beek and Plangnet, um, uh, more fully treating the uh, elements in Lai. Um, so these are preverbal systems, um, uh, which uh, uh, have a lot of similarities to other systems that have been described. Um, uh, Zakaria's uh, description of Hyo's uh, directionals in, uh, include two elements, unless I've missed one. Uh, so the um, preverbal element, uh, which um, uh, resembles an additive, uh, and a postverbal one, which also resembles kind of an additive, uh, an al element that uh, Zakaria calls a departative. Um, uh, so not a very extensive system uh, compared to other languages uh, like Dai uh, in the Southeast. Uh, in the Southwest, um, the systems are not generally that uh, uh, um, rich, but uh, Rangmicha appears to have a fairly rich system in part because it uh, borrows some elements from Mu. So alongside <coughs> elements which are uh, native Kukichin elements, it uh, uses uh, an element cham, uh, which is an additive. Uh, it uses tkut or kut, uh, which is an element that means back or again, um, which also is apparently from ru. Um, uh, but it also has elements of its own uh, that I've uh, worked on recently, uh, including um, a number of things uh, that are additive uh, that I list in 23. Uh, and um, the examples I give in the handout don't illustrate all of these. So he actually, it turns out, is uh, the most neutral of these additives. Um, uh, I'll talk about kui in a second. And I uh, haven't got an example of bai here, but I actually understand how bai is different from the others. So I can tell you about that if you uh, would like me to later. Um, so. Uh, uh, so Ringmicha uh, and Kumi both have uh, venatives, uh, which uh, presumably reflect the, um, the uh, archaic uh, venative, which I said probably had the, f well, I'm not the only person who said it. So Delancey probably said uh, it had a, a form something similar to H vowel NG or ng. Um, so uh, usually it's only an ng prefix in Ringmicha. Uh, as in 24, uh, in Kumi, it uh, has a, a larger form, ang, uh, uh, as in 25. Uh, Rangmicha also has what I've uh, determined to be, uh, at the top of page 9, uh, a distributed, or I maybe I should call it a distributive additive. Distributive additive sounds strange, so distributed additive uh, is what I've settled on. Um, so it indicates motion away from a deictic center uh, plus action performed in various places um, uh, or in order to perform action in various places, uh, like you see in example 26. Um, so this kui element in Rangmicha is uh, actually cognate with a perfective marker vui in uh, kumi, uh, and I'm still assessing the extent to which 
uh, it retains any residual distributive semantics in Kumi. I, I haven't detected it before, so I'm trying to recheck it, but uh, I don't um, think that it does. Um, Rangmicha and Kumi also have apparently unrelated uh, upwards motion directionals, uh, which are postverbal, uh, seen in 27 and 28. So Kang in Rangmicha and uh, Gala in uh, Kumi. Um, also postverbal are Rangmicha and Kumi's downwards directionals, uh, which uh, uh, actually are cognate uh, uh, seen in 29 and 30. So probably you can tell that Tuk uh, in Rangmicha uh, is feasibly cognate with Katiu. Um, so um, there must have been a prefix on this element uh, that Rangmicha has lost, but uh, um, the iu rhyme in Kumi reflects an uk rhyme in Rangmicha or in you know, their predecessor. Uh, so I'll also note uh, uh, Conrath's work on the relationship between uh, venatives and cislocatives or venative, uh, sorry, venatives or cislocatives as uh, she refers to them and participant marking, uh, which uh, I believe has a, a wider distribution than just in Northeast where uh, she uh, notes that it uh, occurs. Um, so uh, uh, development of second person marking out of a, a, a venative or cislocative marker. Um, so similar sorts of things I think are going on in Kumi uh, with their venative um, maybe also in Ring Mitchell, although it's not clear. Um, so there's still more work to be done in terms of directionals, uh, but we're uh, obtaining, I believe, a critical mass of information in this area uh, as well. And uh, I, uh, just like I think we have for valence affecting constructions. Um, so to turn to a couple of areas uh, which uh, uh, have maybe not had as much progress in them, uh, so uh, what I refer to as verbal classifiers uh, in uh, South Central. So uh, Henderson had this notion of chiming. Uh, so these were adverbial elements which occurred in post-verbal position uh, and had a form, I guess, approximating something like ding dong or cling clang. Uh, hence the name chiming. I'm otherwise not really sure where the word chiming came from unless it was a translation from uh, Tedim or a translation from Burmese. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, there's a um, rhyme and chime. So uh -huh. it's, it's, it comes from the descriptions of Burmese adverbs uh -huh. um, where you take, um, you keep the same vowel and you yep. do a, a rhyme with a T. So boop oh. is that short, but someone who's short that in an adverb always boop. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, so anyway, um, uh, Bhaskar Rao uh, had told us more about Tedim chiming uh, by the uh, mid 90s, uh, and Patent uh, relabeled these chimes uh, idiophones, uh, as demonstrated by my favorite fly uh, example of these in number 31. Uh, so in 31A, uh, the uh, element watma occurs uh, and evokes a, uh, the image of a uh, large or uh, rotund baby, I guess, fat baby. Um, uh, yatma, on the other hand, uh, creates the image of a uh, baby which is small or thin. Uh, and there's a typo in that, uh, so it shouldn't be nunakcha, it should be nakcha with an H rather than an N uh, in uh, 31B. Um, there's also a typo in the gloss for elephant in 32, uh, which I'll turn to next. Uh, so 32 and 33 uh, show you the related phenomenon in Kumi where uh, the elements in question uh, focus mostly on the size of the referent uh, that's involved. Um, so there, there is an, uh, there, so there are semantic nuances that often co-occur with uh, these elements uh, and uh, they may involve some element of visual imagery or other kind of imagery um, like they do in uh, Tedim and Lai. Um, but uh, the, the sense of largeness or uh, smallness is really the central uh, uh, element of meaning in them, it would seem. Uh, so for instance, uh, uh, in 32, uh, the element Ga uh, refers to uh, a relatively large uh, king's daughter um, as opposed to uh, the element ge in uh, 33, uh, 
which refers to the smallness of the child that's involved here. Uh, and in both of these instances, uh, the ka or ke element also includes the information that uh, whatever verbing occurred, uh, it verbed the relevant referent to death. Uh, so the king's daughter dies in 32 due to being stepped on by the, uh, the elephant. And uh, in 33, um, it's this uh, uh, sp spirit uh, that I refer to as an ogre uh, in other work, which uh, 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 captures his son and uh, uh, beats him to death and then eats him and plants his head atop the... Uh, uh, the granary uh, spoke or stick or whatever I guess it is. So uh, anyway, um, Ray Mitchell also has a verbal classifier uh, kat kat, which uh, is actually identical to this uh, ka ke one in um, in kumi. So uh, again, in 34, uh, it, uh, comments on the uh, large size of uh, the sister and uh, that uh, she is. Um, uh, well, uh, bop is the neutral word to mean to kill, um, so she's killed to death, I guess. It's a little bit uh, superfluous, but the, the element of to death is still there in this one as well. Um, but not all of these elements have uh, lots of uh, rich additional semantics other than size, so hoop-loop and hoop-loop uh, can refer to both the motion of a dove or an elephant, uh, but um, Hoop loop is a small uh, or diminutive verbal classifier uh, in reference to a dove in 35A, but uh, hoop loop is in reference to an elephant uh, in 35B, so a large uh, or an augmentative uh, verbal classifier there. Um, so those occur also in Ring Mitcha, and where they're attested, uh, as I've already said, size seems to be the most central uh, sense uh, that they have, either literally or metaphorically. Um, so it can sometimes refer to relative extent of some quality uh, if the, the predicate refers to a, a quality uh, rather than a, a, a more active um, event. So uh, they may appear in non-reduplicated form uh, in Kumi and during Mitcha, at least I'm pretty sure also in Mru. Um, so they don't really have a chime form to them. Um, they also don't have a, a change in the vowel in almost all cases. There may be a couple of exceptions to that in kumi um, that I can think of. Um, and uh, again, they often do, uh, although their central notion is size, uh, bear some idiosyncratic semantic nuances or can be associated with particular imagery uh, res resembling idiophones. Uh, and this latter observation is important uh, for our de development of lexical resources because um, where these occur, um, it's really important that uh, you actually check for every verb, um, what, which of these can occur with the verb and what effect do they have. Um, and uh, uh, I haven't, uh, I must have done that yet for either of these languages and uh, it's um, uh, a daunting task that hopefully native speakers will uh, help us with. Um, uh, however, since I made these observations about uh, uh, chiming and verbal classifiers a decade ago, um, not much has been shown about uh, their use elsewhere in Kuki Chin, and I'm worried that their, their use may be waning if it wasn't already uh, waning by the uh, time I made the observations that I made about Kumi. Um, and I know I'm running probably pretty short on time, but uh, just briefly on uh, elaborate expressions, I think this also holds for elaborate expressions. Uh, illustrated in 3B with uh, the very first uh, elaborate expression in Kumi I encountered in the wild uh, where a tiger uh, is searching for uh, a girl who's hiding from him. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so the tudi tudun and the li laong uh, structures there involve an, an elaboration element. Um, so Pudung and Laong are enough to mean uh, water gourd or pot. Um, and they've got this uh, default reduplicative templatic uh, uh, elaboration of them. Um, not all um, uh, elaborations are reduplicative. Um, that's just the kind of default. Uh, and uh, this has very similar uh, sorts of effects to what you see um, for um, uh, elaborate expressions elsewhere in uh, Southeast Asia. 
uh, in terms of making uh, the discourse or the utterance sound nice, um, and also in terms of uh, some other things that I've uh, suggested uh, correlate with the use of these. Um, Ring Mitchell also has elaborate expressions. Uh, so for instance, uh, Bang Dong in uh, number 37 uh, appears to be an elaboration for uh, shoulder, so um, I can't for the life of me get consultants to tell me that it means anything, and they, uh, after long discussions, have decided it must be what, I've, uh, what I'm calling elaborations. Uh, so uh, there are also aspects to this uh, example which make it fit in with other uh, kinds of elaboration that I can tell you about if you ask me about it. Um, so the Ringmicha and other languages um, in the area like Muru also exhibit elaborations, uh, elaborate expressions, uh, not as robustly as Kumi does, um, but nevertheless relatively uh, frequently. Um, so, uh, and it's, uh, as I've alluded to, unclear how widespread or robust this phenomenon is. Um, so little uh, description of it has been uh, forthcoming since I uh, worked on this about uh, 10 years ago. Um, and nevertheless, again, the unpredictability uh, of elaborate uh, expression formation is potentially significant for the development of lexical resources because uh, ideally for anything that can have an elaborate expression you would uh, have a recording of what the elaborate expression was uh, at least. Um, so let me uh, just conclude briefly by observing the obvious, um, the progress that's made in the analysis of uh, cookie chan morphosyntax over the last 10 years. Uh, owes everything to people getting out and expanding the corpus of data for Kuki Chen languages, uh, so something that we are all uh, participating in and uh, can be proud of, um, but there's clearly much more to do, and I hope to have uh, demonstrated some areas where I think we're doing a pretty good job and uh, pointed to a few other places where we might dig a bit deeper. Um, so, thank you. Thank you very much, David. Yeah.